well. They call me Jago. I don't know who's Margo. I just hit this lotto. I'm building up my cargo. All right, artists, let's do this. Three color challenge, go. Cry as you put all your nice organized colors in a bag. Tater tot can't even contain all of my colors. Use whatever medium you work with, and if you're a digital artist, use a color generator website. Now without peeking, and I promise I'm not peeking, choose your first color. Okay, and then color number two. And the third color. I hope you like commitment, cause you're stuck with these bad boys. Draw something, either before or after you pick your colors. You can only use what you pulled to color your drawing, so good luck! Don't ask questions You don't wanna know Learn my lesson Way too long ago To be talking to you, Belladonna Should've taken a break, not an okay What is that? How to draw black people hair. First, get your hairline going. It's, it can be as high or as low as you want it to be. The thing with black hair is that you can make any shape you want, y'all. You think I'm joking? Watch. And boom! When you're drawing African-American hair, you have more versatility and like you can do more stuff with it. It's not bias, it's just the truth. That's what they call our hair a work of art. We're gonna start making a little bit like zigzaggy scribbles all over these little um, spheres that I made on our head. Drawing black hair is probably the most fun. You can add your shading, you know what I'm saying? Break mine into little squares because like these are like sections of the hair. Like her hair got parted. Add shading and shit. Add some more zigzaggy jaggedy shapes inside for the shading. And then boom, some beautiful bento knots. For him, find the hairline. I'm gonna draw a big, big circle. Like a big one, a big bento knot. Then add more zigzaggy jaggedy lines following that shape. Finding an afro is probably the easiest one. Shade it in. Why he look like me a little bit? <laughs> Erase! Add more zigzaggedies. And you're done. Yo, she is so beautiful. Time for another fun drawing exercise. Get some colored markers or colored pencils. Get a white sheet of paper. Fill up the paper with random shapes and color them in. Boom, now fill up the rest of the page. Kinda like this. And then without any planning, add some faces to all of them. There's one, no time to fill in the rest. And then I added in some details, and this is what I came up with. Try it for yourself and let me know what you think. And now it's time to ruin your childhood. This is the real story of Sleeping Beauty. Brace yourself, this one gets pretty graphic. Sleeping Beauty is a princess named Talia who pricked her finger and fell into a deep coma. She lay in an abandoned castle where a king came by one day. He finds Talia sleeping there and he sexually assaults her in her sleep. He leaves not realizing he got her pregnant. Nine months go by and she gives birth to twins while still asleep. When the twins are born, two fairies come by and try to take care of them by getting them to breastfeed from their mother. One of the babies misses the nipple and sucks on her finger instead, pulling out the poison splinter, causing her to wake up! 
The king returns to try to go for round two, and he finds that she's awake, and she falls in love with him. By the way, he's married. His wife, who Maleficent is based off of, finds out about the whole thing and tries to feed him his own kids. But she didn't know that the cook actually set the kids free and he used the lamb instead. Then, she finds Sleeping Beauty and tries to burn her alive. The king barges in on this, sees what's going on, and demands the guards push his wife into the fire instead. Having done nothing wrong, the queen got burned alive. And Sleeping Beauty wound up happily ever after with her rapist baby daddy. Alright guys, I got an idea. Get your pencils. Okay, draw something. Now erase it. Draw something different over that. Now erase that too. Now activate your powers of necromancy and draw over these lines. And you've got something new. I never liked it on TikTok how people will say, Oh my gosh, so this took like 30 hours to make and y'all are just gonna scroll up. Please like and follow. Because to me, that's sort of a tacky way to market yourself. Now, that's not to disrespect the artist, you know, they can be quite talented. But for me, it should be about emphasizing one's individual skills, creativity, and form of expression. I've accepted myself that not everyone is going to see my art, so why should I guilt people into feeling bad and, like, terrible people if they don't like and follow? Not everyone is going to see your art, but for the people who do, it should be up to them to decide if they like it. Unless you show me!